Hello guys, today I want to go over regular expressions. A regular expression is a sequence of characters that forms a search pattern. A regular expression can be used to check if a string contains a specified search pattern. Python has a built-in package called re which can be used to work with regular expressions. So let's import the re package. Import re. And it says right here it's a support for a regular expressions package. Let's create an example. Search the string to see if it starts with the word the and ends with the word Spain. So here I've created a text variable which has the string the rain in Spain. Now here I'm using the regular expression dot search method and in here it will search for the word the as identified by the upper caret character which is an argument that tells it what to do then the dot star basically prints out everything in between or checks everything in between and then the last word has to end with the dollar sign so Spain dollar sign is the last word it's checking at so if I were to increase the string beyond it it would not search and then I have to put in the string that I'm searching and then we'll print it and here's our output a regular expression match object span 0 to 17 index values so it's 17 index values long the match is the rain in Spain now just to show you it ends at Spain Spain today also extra text so let me expand the string and let's run it now it says none because it's not ending at Spain, I see. So let me uh, just add this here. Let's see what this does. Also none because it doesn't begin with the word the. So let me just put this in the middle. And then it does it. This time there's a 39 index long string and then the whole thing is printed out. I guess my search parameter was very specific in this case. Anyway, who oh boy. Uh, regular functions, regular expression functions. There are four functions that you need to be aware of when working with regular expressions. Well, there could be more, but these four are like the main ones. So there is find all. It returns a list matching containing all the matches. Search, which I just went over. It returns a match object if there is a match between anywhere in the string. Split, which returns a list where the string has been split. And then sub, which replaces one or many matches with a string. And here are some meta characters to be aware of, such as the upper caret and star and the dollar sign. So these are character arguments you can place inside. So if you use the brackets, that will be a set of characters. And here's an example of what the output would look like. If you use the backslash, it signals a special sequence. It can also be used for escape characters. So here's how you would use it. Um, backslash D, for instance. The dot, which I just used, is any character except new line. So, which actually is a, I'm curious. Or to create a new line in the string. Will it still work? Nope. It has to be in the same line. So the dot here cannot search a second line. But if it's all in one line, then yes, it does output it. So the dot here you have to be really careful with. Then we have the upper caret which is starts with. So it's, that's why it starts with the. The dollar sign is the ends with. The star is zero or more occurrences. So if there is an occurrence or multiple occurrences it will check. Which actually think of it why don't I uh, copy 
and duplicate. Let's see what happens here. Okay, so both of them. So this is interesting. The match only returns it one time, so it recognizes it's only there's a duplicate. But the span is it adds the it adds the second instance in there. So so it can tell if there's multiple variances. It's just searching if there if it exists at all. Anyways, you can use the plus sign to for one or more occurrences. So if there's zero occurrences, I think it may give us an error. I don't know. Actually, hang on. So let's use the plus sign. So we're doing it the same way. Let's get rid of the word the. You know, I'm just going to take its word for it. I'm not going to go too much into a detailed explanation. Anyways, you can use the curly brackets to find an exact specific number of occurrences. So this is how you would do. Let's search the, in this case, it's searching for the characters AL and if they occur twice. We have the uh, straight up line, which is either or. So search for either one of them. And then we have parentheses to capture a group. And then here is a special sequence. A special sequence is followed by the backslash of one of the characters listed below and it has a special meaning. So the special sequence backslash A returns the match if there's a specified characters at the beginning of a string. So in this case if I use backslash A and then type in the, let me try. Actually, hang on. Oh yeah. The. All right, it, it finds the first the. Anyways, backslash lowercase b returns a match where the specified characters are at the beginning or end of a word. So for bane or ain, we'll look for those words and then output if it matches. Uppercase B. Okay, you know what? Th these are these are a lot, so I'm just gonna let you guys read up on all of these. I mean, this is a video. You can pause it and then read these and then test them out on your own. So you guys can do this at any point. Anyways, let's just go over each of the main function types. So here's the find all function. So let's go over this. So we're using the find all and it'll find any instance of AI, which there should be two. And it does. It prints it out it prints them out in a list. And if there's no matches, then an empty list will be returned. So here's an example of that. So find the the find the string Portugal not there so nothing is returned now the search function I just went over this so I'm not gonna go over it again I mean okay this is a different example so here's another example for search find any find any Anyway, it finds the first white space or the first, you know, space bar, which is in the index location three. It works. I don't know why it's giving me a, a caution or whatever. It's there. Anyways, it works. So it just searches for, it uses backslash s, which over here it returns where the string does not contain when the string contains a white space character so it looks looks for the first index value where the white space shows up and if no matches are found uh, the value none is returned I already went over that anyways 
Here's the split function. The split function returns a list where the string has been split. So... It'll look for the white spaces. And it splits them up and puts them in a list. So it'll split them along according to white spaces. So again, it's using the backslash s to search for white spaces, and then the function is going to split them on whatever argument you're using it. So yeah, the rain in Spain is now split into four strings instead of one singular string. You can control the number. You can control the number of occurrences by specifying a max split. So in the end here I put in 1 and it only splits it once. So it finds the first white space and then splits it and then doesn't split it again after that. So let me try 2 and then it splits it twice and then the rest of it continues on. So that's how you can control the maximum number of splits. And then the sub function. You can replace every white sp every space bar with the number 9. Here's a quick example. So look for the white spaces, I replace it with 9, and then here's what you're replacing it in. And here's the sub function. And instead of white spaces, we have the 9 rain in the 9 sp in the the. The 9 rain, 9 in, or 9 Spain. That's what it says. And you can control the amount of replacements you can do. So if I just were to add 2. The last one is still a white space, but only the first two are replaced by 9. Now we can use what is called a match object. A match object is an object containing information about the search and the result. If there is no match, the value none will be returned. So do a search that will return a, ma a match object. So here's an example of a match object. which. Yeah, it prints an object, and then here, this is what I was talking about, the match object, it's over here. This is what you've been looking for. It's also identified here. And the match object has properties and methods used to retrieve information about the search and the result. So we can use the span function to return the tuple containing the start and end positions of the match. The string returns string passed into the function and then the group function returns the part of the string where there is a match. So here's a last three examples using these functions. So print the position, the start to end position of the first match. So let me just go over this quickly. The regular expression looks for any words that start with the uppercase S. So here the R and W end Gonna look for the uppercase S, which there is one Spain, and when I run this, it finds it, finds it, and then it finds the word. So S is in the word Spain. It starts at index 12 and ends at index 17, and that's what we are returning here. That's the location of the word that starts with capital S. If I were to do this twice, Spain, Spain. It does not work, it only searches the first time. We can use a for loop to go through the whole list using iterators, incrementation, but I'm lazy and shallow, so I'm not doing that. Now we can print the str we can print the string. So the search function search ah, searches for the word that starts with the letter S, so let's print the word. Alright, it doesn't have the parentheses. Let me see if there's only one Spain. No, it just returns the whole string. Weird. Anyways. Oh, 
it's supposed to print the part of the string where there's a match, but I guess it just prints the whole thing. Unless... Not the whole thing. Anyways, the regular expression looks for any words that start with the upper S. So here we're gonna use the group. And okay, so the group just returns the word. The string just returns the whole thing. And if there's no match, none will be returned. Anyways, that's regular expressions in a nutshell. And with this, I'm done with the Python reference tutorial. After this, I'll be working on a GUI tutorial with Ktinker. And then after that, I think the whole Ktinker tutorial will be just one massive video. And then after that, I will be moving on to a few projects that I want to test out. Basically, I want to learn, I want to get some projects done for my resume and then I want, just want to add them in. So I want to go over you, go on YouTube on how I do them. I think I will be changing my YouTube channel name to my actual name. I mean, at this point, everyone kind of knows. It's Harris, by the way. I mean, it just shows up right here. I tried hiding this because I want privacy, but I don't think it matters. I think I'll create a separate channel for privacy reasons if I want to do something private anyways. But other than that, yeah, I'll just use this channel to help build my resume and then go through examples. And you guys are welcome to look through and see if there's anything that helps you out in your coding tutorials, in your coding adventures as well. Also, I will be going over some gaming here and there because I don't want to do coding 24-7. It gets really monotonous. But anyways, I hope you guys got something out of this and have a good one. Peace out.